Hello, um, in this video we are going to continue with our biomechanics unit. Um, the next chapter, what we will be learning about between now and the end of term, we're going to look at linear motion, angular motion, uh, fluid mechanics and projectile motion. So this video is about linear motion. So we're going to look at the characteristics and how um, linear motion is created. We will look at key descriptors, so distance, displacement, speed, velocity, acceleration and deceleration. And we'll look at those in a little bit more detail. And we will also look at how to draw graphs of linear motion. This is a key skill that you will need to know about for your exam. So let's get started. What do you think linear motion will be? So we've, we've discussed it in previous videos. Take a few seconds. What do you think linear motion is? The answer is it is movement of a body in a straight or curved line where all parts move the same distance in the same direction over the same time. So the, the key here is it's not just movement in a straight line. It's movement where all parts move the same distance and the same direction. Um, so it can still be in a curved line, which is strange because when you think of linear, you think it's just straight movement only. So it results from a direct force being applied to the centre of mass of the body. Um, can you remember what centre of mass is? So centre of mass is the point at which a body is balanced in all directions. So can you find the centre of mass in these four images. Okay, so the centre of mass of this gymnast here, she's got her arms up, so we're probably looking around the centre point here. The centre of mass of the football is right bang in the middle, probably about there. Now the centre of mass of the shuttle is a little bit different because if you looked at just the shape of it, you would assume it'd be down here somewhere. However, we know that the mass of the rubber is much higher than the mass of the feathers and therefore the centre of mass is more likely to be up here somewhere. And then this gymnast here, the shape of her body, um, we're looking probably the centre of mass being around this point here. Okay, so sporting examples of linear motion. So here we have an image of a wakeboarder. Now the wakeboarder is probably not moving in a completely straight line, it's probably moving in a curved line, but because all parts of his body are moving the same distance in the same time, then it is linear motion. We also have a performer of the skeleton. So again, this one here, all moving at the same time, same distance. So movement of a body in a straight or curved line where all parts move the same distance in the same direction over the same time. So if we recap what Newton's first law of motion is, a body will continue in its state of rest or uniform velocity until external forces are exerted upon it. So according to this, um, a body or an object will continue to travel in linear motion indefinitely if uninterrupted. So if no other forces act upon it, it will keep moving in that linear motion forever. However, we know that that, that rarely happens and we know that there are forces that tend to cause deceleration in sports. So can you think of some of the forces that we've looked at in previous videos that would cause deceleration? So the answer would be things like friction, um, and air resistance and maybe even gravity or weight. So what could be useful information to analyse performance in, in running specifically? So we could look at their speed of that motion, we could look at the velocity, we could look at the acceleration and we can look at those things over the whole event or for different parts of the event. Um, and this can allow us to identify strengths and weaknesses. Um, for example, if a runner has a poor final 400 metres in a 5,000 metre race, and then once you've identified that, then you can do something about it. So, linear motion descriptors. We have looked at these previously, but we're going to look in a little bit more detail. So, there are five key descriptors that help us build data and create a picture of different performances. They are distance, displacement, speed, velocity and acceleration or deceleration. Now distance is the total length covered from start to finish in metres. We always measure it in metres in sport. 
So the distance in a 100 metre sprint is 100 metres. In swimming, four lengths of a 50 metre pool would be a distance of 200 metres. And the London Marathon is 42,195 metres. Now, displacement is slightly different. Displacement is the shortest straight line route from start to finish measured in metres. So it's still measured in metres. However, the displacement covered in 100 meter sprint is 100 meters because the, the they you know that's the shortest distance from the start line to the end line. Swimming four lengths of a 50 meter pool though would give you a displacement score of zero because the start line and the finish line are at the same spot. The London Marathon, the displacement of the London Marathon is actually around 10,000 meters rather than the 42,000 meters they actually run. Now speed is the rate of change in distance and it is measured in meters per second. So we calculate this using speed equals distance over time. So if Daphne Schippers, a very famous Dutch um, sprinter, she um, specializes in the 200 meters and she broke the 200 meter world record with a time of 21.63 seconds. Can you calculate her average speed during the race? I'll give you, if you take a minute, pause the video and try and work that out. So the answer is 9.25 meters and you would calculate that by dividing 200 metres, the distance, by 21.63 seconds, the time. Now, I would like you to pause the video and I'd like you just to practice finding out average speed. So if you can, um, for all of these different competitors, if you can find out their average speed for these different events. Okay, so here are all the answers. Hopefully that was pretty straightforward and you got all of those correct. Um, it's a key skill that you will need to know for the exam. Um, I've seen lots of exam questions in past papers where they have asked you to calculate average speeds and um, analyse them. So, moving on to velocity. Now, velocity is the rate of change in displacement measured in metres per second. So, speed is the rate of change in distance. Velocity is the rate of change in displacement. So you calculate it using velocity equals displacement divided by time. So Usain Bolt broke the 100 meter record with a time of 9.58. What was his average velocity? Work it out. So you'd calculate it by dividing 100 meters by 9.58, which should give you 10.44 meters per second. Now, with this, because the 100 metres is the displacement and the distance is the same figure, they're both 100 metres, his average speed would be the same as his average velocity. However, would Daphne Shippers competing in the 200 metres, would her average velocity be the same as her average speed? So the answer would be no, and the answer would be no because distance would be 200 metres, so to work out the average speed you'd do 200 metres divided by her time, whereas the displacement would be less because the displacement would be from this, um, from the 200 metre start um, here in a straight shortest line to there. So we'd, that would be the displacement distance rather than the actual distance. So that would give you a different figure. So acceleration and deceleration. Acceleration is the rate of change in velocity and it's measured in metres per second squared. So you calculate it using the final velocity minus the initial velocity divided by time taken. So it gives you the difference in velocities. Now Bolt's split time for his first 20 metres was 2.89 seconds. So it took him 2.89 seconds to run the first 20 metres of his race. His velocity at 20 metres was 6.92 metres per second. Can you work out what his acceleration was? Pause the video, have a go at it. Okay, so his 
initial velocity, because it's the first 20 metres of, of his race, would be zero. He would not be moving at the first 20 metres at the, at the start. So his initial velocity would be zero, because we're looking at the acceleration between him starting the race and the first 20 metres. So here, his vinyl, final velocity would be 6.92, minus his initial velocity which would be zero divided by the time taken which would be 2.89 seconds his acceleration would be 2.39 meters per second squared deceleration occurs when the rate of change in velocity is negative so for example a sprinter crosses the line traveling nine meters per second and two seconds later they're traveling at five meters per second what would be their deceleration so again, you use the same calculation. So if you pause the video and try and work it out, and then I'll go through the answer. So their final velocity would be 5 metres per second. You deduct their initial velocity of 9 metres per second, which gives you minus 4. You divide minus 4 by the time taken, 2, which would leave you with minus 2 meters per second so their deceleration they are decelerating by 2 meters per second squared in the exam you need to make sure that it's deceleration and not acceleration so remember force equals mass times acceleration so acceleration equals force divided by mass so some few things just to consider distance and speed only measure size whereas displacement, velocity and acceleration measure size and direction. So they give a much more precise picture of motion. OK, so moving on to drawing graphs of linear motion using those key descriptors. Now, these can be used to represent motion of a body moving in a straight or a curved path. And the key descriptors can be recorded and plotted using three different graph types, which we're going to go through now. So you've got a distance over time graph, a speed over time graph, and a velocity over time graph. Time is always plotted on the x-axis, the horizontal axes at the bottom. And you always need to make sure that you label your axes with the units in brackets. And then you can use a curved line of best fit um, to show th the average motion. So looking at these distance time graphs, can you work out what each graph represents? Pause the video, take a few minutes, try and work it out. OK, so this first graph, because the distance is remaining the same as the time goes on, that is representing rest. This one here, the distance is increasing as the time goes on, so it's representing constant speed. The third graph here, the distance increases rapidly after a curve, so it's showing acceleration, they're speeding up. And then the last one, you can work it out, is deceleration, they are slowing down as the time goes on. So the gradient, the change in the y and the change in the x-axis, indicates the speed at a particular instant. And it shows if the body is at rest, traveling with a constant speed or if it's accelerating or decelerating. Now you can calculate speed at any point using speed equals distance over time. So if I go back to the graph, you can calculate their speed at any point by the distance they've traveled. So at, at this point in the race, if you take that distance and divide it by that time, that would give you their speed at that exact moment. Um, so what would a graph look like which showed the motion of a 100 meter sprinter? So at rest in the blocks, driving out the blocks and accelerating down the track, maintaining their maximum speed, fatiguing and or crossing the line. So if I go back to one of these graphs, so if they're in the block, the distance and time, it always start at zero. And as they're accelerating out of the block, then you'd see the movement go up, like so. And then if they're traveling at a constant speed, then at that point, sorry, at that point, there'd be a curve like that. And then when they're decelerating, it would curve out like so. 
Now the distance wouldn't ever go back down to zero because they've traveled distance so they wouldn't go back to zero. So it would look a bit like an S-shaped curve. So an activity for you. I would like you to use this data to draw a distance over time graph to represent the motion of Usain Bolt and Shelly Ann Fraser Price over the 100 metres in a 2009 race. Can you compare their average speeds over the whole 100 metre race and can you compare their speed at 50 metres? So I'd like you to pause the video, do this graph now and then I'd like you to take a photo of it and send it to me, either email it to me or send it to me on Teams um, for me to check over. Okay, so moving on to speed time graph. So what does this graph show? Pause the video, take a little few minutes, try and interpret it. Okay, so here we have acceleration, so the speed is increasing as the time goes on. Here we have a constant speed, then we have deceleration, then we have stationary because the speed is zero, so they're resting or they're still, and then we have more acceleration and more constant speed. So speed time graphs, they show the speed of a body over a period of time. The gradient of the curve, so how steep the curve is, indicates the acceleration of the body at a particular instant and will show if the body is at rest, moving with constant speed or accelerating or decelerating. Distance travel can be measured as the area under the speed time curve. So here, if we calculated the area of this section here, this area, that would tell us how far the performer had moved by 12, 13 seconds. That would, that would tell us the distance they'd travelled. So, velocity time graph, very similar to speed time graphs. So here, you know, you have acceleration, steady speed, deceleration, increased acceleration. But remember velocity measures displacement and not distance. So velocity, you can actually have a negative velocity. So here, this graph shows someone moving forwards and then someone moving backwards. A negative velocity is someone moving backwards. And again, they show the velocity of a body over a period of time. Gradient of the curve indicates acceleration at a particular instant and can describe the movement. You can calculate the acceleration at any time by using final velocity minus initial velocity over time taken. So here, if we go back, if you took the velocity at this point compared to the velocity at that point, divided it by the time taken there, that would give you the acceleration between those two points. So, using the data that you created for your Bolt and Fraser Price um, distance over time graph, I would like you to use that same data to calculate the velocity at each 20 meter interval and draw a velocity time graph using your results. So again, can you compare the maximum velocity achieved by each athlete and can you compare their average acceleration over the first 10 metres of the sprint? If you can pause the video and again, once you've done that graph, um, you can take a photo of it to send to me via email or team so I can check it. Okay, so another bit of homework as well as emailing a photo of these two graphs um, of, of, of the two graphs for Shelley Ann Fraser Price and um, Usain Bolt, I would like you to research some split times for a performer in a sporting race. I want you to draw a distance time graph for a sporting scenario. So, for example, um, we discussed the sprinter from the blocks to the finish. You could use swimming, running, cycling, rowing, any of them, if you can find some split times online. Um, and then once you've drawn a distance time graph, I would like you to either draw a speed time graph for it or a velocity time graph for it. And then if you take photos of all of your graphs, that you've, all four graphs that you've created and send them across to me to mark. Okay, thank you and good luck.